Hello, I'm Asif Khwaja from ATH Business Solutions. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a people picker control in uh, Microsoft Power Apps. Now, there isn't any specific control for people picker in Power Apps, but uh, Power Apps gives us combo box control, which can be used as a people picker control. Now, there are a few tricks and nuances involved in configuring the combo box control to become a people picker control. And there isn't a lot of information uh, available easily online. And I've seen a lot of people struggle with uh, configuring a combo box to become a people picker. So I thought I will just uh, put this uh, quick video to show you how to do that. So let's see, um, we will go and create a Canvas app. Uh, in a tablet layout, just as an example, so that we have some space available. The first thing that I'll do is I'll go and insert a combo box control. As soon as I insert the combo box, it's asking me for a data source. Now, we haven't uh, created a data source for this, so I will skip this part and uh, we'll configure the data source first. Now, one thing that uh, is good about the combo box control is compared to a drop down is that it not only shows you a list of things or people in this case that uh, we, are, we are going to configure now, it also allows you to um, search for specific items, okay? So we can search for people, um, we can search for Inventory, if you have connected this to a uh, list of inventory, you can search for a customer if you have connected this uh, control to a customer list. So uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility. So let's go ahead and uh, insert the data source first. The data source that we will need for this purpose is called Office 365 Users. I will go ahead and connect it to this data connection. So now we have the data connection in our app, Office 365 users. Um, and then what I will do is I will go ahead and uh, replace the items property for this uh, combo box from this default sample to Office 365 users. But obviously, just doing this will not solve uh, our uh, problem, and it's not going to automatically fetch the list of users and show it in this combo box. We have to use a function for this data connection, specifically called search user. Now, this function uh, takes um, some optional parameters. So the first parameter is called search term, and I say optional because you can see that it's in a curly bracket and the parameter is called search term. Now it needs a text to search for that specific user and in this case what we will do is we will give it the search property of this combo box. So whatever we will type in this combo box um, the connection will go ahead and search for that. If you do not provide any value, then it will simply go ahead and fetch everything. So the name of our combo box is combo box one. Obviously, as a best practice, we should uh, rename these uh, controls that we put on the um, on the apps. But for this purpose, I'll leave it as it is. And uh, for the combo box, we have a property called search text. Whatever text we provide in this combo box will be used by this search text property. And that text will be searched on our Office 365 tenant for that user. The second parameter that it takes is, uh, which is also an optional parameter. So I can simply close this uh, um, function here or I could say, okay, just go ahead and rather than searching everything, just return me top 50 records, okay? And you can see that it returns a table 
and the values should appear in this. Now, if I go and play this app and try to open this, you can see that it doesn't show anything. It looks like it's probably fetching something as like empty records, but it's not showing anything. Why is it not showing? Because we need to look at what fields we have for this uh, combo box configured. So click on edit and we see that, okay, it's showing only city values. Now we can change it to display name from here, as you can see and search field to display name as well. But that doesn't make this particular combo box a people picker or person, person field. To make this a people picker or person field, you have to look at the layouts, which is currently selected as single. But if you look at it, here's the magic that actually makes this control a people picker control. So we have to go and select the person layout for this control. As soon as I select person, you will notice that it gives us primary and secondary text. So for the primary text, we have display name. And for the secondary text, we will go and select email or mail as it um, uh, uses mail for the Office 365 users connection. In the search field, we will use display name. So we will search on the people's display name. Okay. Now, once I have configured this, let's play the app again. And if I open it up, there you go. Now you see it goes in, connects to my Active Directory and uh, fetches all the users. Now it happens to be that we have, uh, I have only these three users available in my, this demo tenant. Uh, that's why it's showing only three, but uh, if there were more, it will show up to 50 number of users and I can then go and select any of these users from this list. And I, could, I can actually select multiple users if I want to, but in some cases we use uh, this combo box to select only one person at a time. And then I can go ahead and remove as well. Now, if you want this combo box to select only one person at a time, you will see that we have a property somewhere here called uh, allow multiple selection. We will switch it off. And searching at the moment, you can see that we also have another property called search that is also off. Now when it's off, you will see that if I go ahead and uh, try to search anything or type anything in here, I can't, I can simply open the combo box and select a person's name from there, but I cannot search for a specific person. So that is where this uh, allow searching property comes in. We need to enable it. Now, if I go and play it, I can remove a person, I can search for a person and select that person's name as well. All right. Now to verify whether this uh, combo box is capturing a person's object properly. Um, I will go ahead and insert two labels in this um, app and I will connect the X property of this label to the uh, combo boxes selected person. So combo box one dot selected dot you can see that the person, whoever was selected here, I can go and select that person's display name. So this label shows the person's display name. And if I go and capture another label here to show you the email address of that. So I'll uh, put the same value here. Just change the display name to mail. And now you can see that um, both of these labels are showing the selected persons or objects values as display name and email address. Now, one of the things that we need to understand is that fine, you can create this combo box and select the value, do the search for any person, 
in your Active Directory, select that person, you have got the object and you can see that it's selecting the object properly. But one of the challenges that we have is how to set the default value of a combo box, especially if it's a person pick a combo box. This is where a lot of people do not understand as to how to do this. And I thought that I will document this so that uh, it helps you in uh, uh, using the combo box for default values. So for the combo box, we have a property called uh, default selected items. Right now you can see that it's uh, empty and there isn't any default value here. Now, in most cases, what people do is they try to use the uh, default function, which is the user function, and try to select a um, person's name from there. Now, this returns a text value, obviously, and a combo box doesn't accept simple text value. It's expecting a table value. And then you might say, okay, we can actually make it a table value. So I could put these parentheses here to make it a table value. And you can see that it now shows the current logged in user's name here. Now, the thing is that it, though it, it looks correct, but it's not correct because if you notice in those two labels that I put on the screen, it's not returning the selected person's display name or email address, which is telling us that this is not the correct value that we should be putting in here. Now, failing that, then some people try to put some, uh, some code that actually generates a person object, um, especially if you want to save it to a backend database like a SharePoint list. And I will go and fetch this code because you can find that code all over the internet and people go and fetch that and simply put this. Once again, you can see that this code, which says that uh, within this curly bracket, which makes it a record or a table, basically. Uh, a record is just one row of uh, a table. And in this one, we have uh, the current user's full name and its email address as well as current users, uh, other uh, properties. Once you populate the default selected value with these properties, you can see that it's capturing that person's object and also returning the default display name, but it doesn't show the email address. And this is where it fails again. When you try to save the value or use the value of this combo box for some other logic, especially if you are building some um, form that you want to change its behavior that's based on the selected user, user's email address, then obviously it fails here because you cannot use this. You cannot use, for example, current user's um, email address to display him certain things or hide certain things. Or if you want to display current user's manager's name in here, then again, it doesn't show the, uh, doesn't fetch proper email address for that manager. And hence, you cannot send an email to the current user's manager, for example. So a lot of things, yeah. Now let's see how to fix this. And fixing this is not hard. It's very easy. We just need to look at the items property for this combo box first. So let's go back and then we will come back to the default value. So let's look at the items property and see how we actually connected it to the data source for this combo box. Now, what we did was we actually used search user function to search for whatever user's name is typed in in this uh, combo box. Yeah. So we will copy this and use this and modify it for its default value as well. So our default selected items, I will test it here. Now you can see, even though I haven't typed in anything, but it's fetching the correct person object based on whatever value was there in this combo box and returns the current um, user's value as well. But obviously this is not what I will use here. 
I can use the current user's email address. Email. And you can see how it automatically goes in, fetches that user's object, puts it in the drop down, and shows the proper values here. So, this is how you um, put the default value for the combo box. So, I can go and select any person's name from this list, and it would return the correct names and values, uh, especially for the email address, correctly. So this is how you populate the default value for a combo box. OK, so a lot of people have asked me that how do you default this combo box or people pickle control to the current user's manager name here. Now, that is also very easy to do. If you see uh, in the current default items, we have used the search user function to search the current user's uh, name there. Instead of doing that, we can use another function called manager. Now, when you use the manager function, uh, you'll see that uh, parameter, it says user ID. And in the description, it says that user ID can be user principal name or email ID. So basically, all it's wanting here is the email address of the currently logged in user. And then it can go and fetch the manager's name from Office 365 and populate this combo box with that name. So let's go ahead and fetch the current user's email address, which will come from the user function, and close this bracket. And you see, as soon as we provided this value, the combo box automatically got populated with uh, my manager's name here, which uh, happens to be John Kwaja in this uh, example tenant here. And not only it fetches the current user's name here, but you can see it fetches the whole object and populates, shows the correct value, uh, including the email address as well. And then in my app, I can go ahead and use this, uh, use the selected value of this combo box for sending an email or you know sending an approval to my manager and things like those. So I hope this uh, helps you in understanding how the combo box people picker can be configured in uh, Power Apps. Thank you.